Today's top stories at NBR, OCR up from 0.5%. Second class action against aid to milk confirmed. Axe Environment spokesperson says clear problems with legislation confirmed. And there's more coming right up. Kia ora and welcome to NBR Today, a wrap of the day's top business stories from the Authority in New Zealand Business News since 1970, nbr.co.nz. It's Wednesday, November 24th. I'm Paul Brennan. Thanks again for joining us. Kiwi Rail will have a new chair in place by September 1st and it will be an external appointment, acting chair Sue McCormack has told the NBR. The move comes as Chief Executive Greg Miller resigned this morning, Wednesday, saying recent and sustained allegations in the media about his leadership style, while rejected by him, had become a distraction. In the past two years, six out of Miller's ten strong senior executive team have resigned. It was also alleged to NBR that the board was weak and dysfunctional and had struggled to stand up to its chief executive. McCormack said the government, as the shareholder of the state-owned enterprise, had been doing the rounds and had chosen someone as new chair whose name would be announced in due course. McCormack said Miller had approached her over the weekend about resigning and she'd called an urgent board meeting on Tuesday to discuss the matter. The Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Committee has raised the official cash rate, the OCR, to 0.75%, up from 0.5%. The committee said it remained appropriate to continue reducing monetary stimulus so as to maintain price stability and support maximum sustainable employment. In a statement, the committee said the level of global economic activity continued to rise, supported by accommodative monetary and fiscal policy settings and the relaxation of COVID-related health restrictions. MIQ free business travel to Australia will be able to resume in January, but businesses will have to wait another month to easily connect with other parts of the world. COVID-19 Response Minister Chris Hipkins said fully vaccinated New Zealanders would be able to enter New Zealand from Australia from January 17 and go into self-isolation. There will still be carefully managed processes for recent arrivals, including a mandatory seven-day self-isolation period for people who are not required to enter MIQ. COVID-19 Response Minister Chris Hipkins. Milk marketer A2 has confirmed a second class action filed in Australia alleging breach of continuous disclosure obligations over a significant downturn in its performance. In a statement to the NZX, A2 said it had been served with proceedings filed in the Supreme Court of Victoria by Shine Lawyers, a Sydney-based class action specialist firm. The company considers that it has at all times complied with its disclosure obligations, denies any liability and will vigorously defend the proceedings at said. Shine Lawyers Class Actions Practice Leader Craig Alsop said the claim covered investors who bought shares between August 19, 2020 and May 7, 2021. As the government and National Party push ahead with their plans to speed up the consenting process for housing developments, they face criticism their legislation will have the opposite effect to what they propose. Public submissions on the Resource Management Enabling Housing Supply and Other Matters Amendment Bill have closed after a truncated select committee process. But Axe Environment spokesperson Simon Court said clear problems with the legislation have been confirmed by submitters to the committee. He joined the NBR political editor Brent Edwards. They need to solve the infrastructure problem and get the funding and financing for that in place if they actually want to build the terrace departments and the uh, other housing in the city centres and along transport corridors where it's needed. Axe Environment spokesperson Simon Court with Brent Edwards there. The Employment Court has found an Auckland Airport employee fired for refusing to be vaccinated has an arguable case for reinstatement on grounds that the company may not have followed a proper process for his dismissal. In a judgment issued Tuesday, Employment Court Judge Bruce Corkle ordered the staffer, who has named suppression, to remain an employee on paid leave for two months and on unpaid leave thereafter until his case is redetermined by the Employment Authority. When the government introduced a vaccine order requiring airport border workers to be vaccinated. The airport decided after consultation with union delegates that engineering service staff such as WXN were covered by the order. This meant they had to be vaccinated by September 30 this year.
The full details of those stories and more are at nbr.co.nz right now. Tomorrow at NBR, Brent Edwards joins mounting criticism of the government's rush in passing the COVID-19 response vaccination legislation under urgency. And look out for NBR's coverage of Fisher & Paykel Healthcare's first half result and whether COVID continues to boost its performance. I'm Paul Brennan. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow from around lunchtime for the morning's NBR trending stories. Then same time, same place, right here again from 5.30 tomorrow for another NBR Today.